Okay, so hey everyone, I'm uh, Tom McQuillan, and yeah, today I want to talk about extending the LabVIEW environment to meet your needs. And this is going to be a repeat of a presentation I did previously at GDevCon, which was quite quite well received, um, but I've made a couple of edits uh, since, since then. Um, before we get started on that vote, I want to give a shout out to Danny George um, as my topic for um, Our Giants Are Female. So Professor Danny George um, has, has been a role model throughout the STEM industry throughout the UK and Europe and America as well. And I shall see there's a, a comment here. Have you removed Jörg's picture? No. So you've, you've got that to come. Um, so Danny George, uh, president of the IET, uh, the Institute of Engineering and Technology. She's given loads of different TED talks and talks to encourage uh, children to get into STEM. So uh, science, technology, mathematics and technology. Um, I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting Danny George a couple of times when I worked at National Instruments. And yeah, she's she's very approachable. She's done great work for the STEM community. So um, let's get started with uh, my presentation. And if you have any questions, comments or thoughts, please just let me know in the chat window. I've got a, a screen here just monitoring the chat. OK, so as I said, we're going to be talking about caring for the LabVIEW um, environment. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I want to talk about this topic, because if, you, if you've if you known me, if you see me develop or if we develop code together, you'll know that I really love efficient programming. I'm always trying to use shortcuts or not necessarily uh, taking shortcuts to achieve items, doing things properly. But if I have an idea, I want to get to that solution as soon as possible. And a very like neat example of this is simply adding a GIF to all of your VI icons. So there's a blog post here from Hempel Software Engineering, and it's just a really nice straightforward example of how you can use VI scripting just to add a GIF to all of your VI icons. So in this scenario, imagine you have 100 different VIs and they're all sending user events or broadcasting messages around your application. Instead of manually updating all of those icons, let's just use some VI scripting. It doesn't take too long to develop, and you can run it. Uh, and you can just run it. It'll happen all programmatically. And thanks for the link in the description, or the link in the comment section. And if you're not sure who Jörg is, this is him in the corner. And you'll be pleased to know we'll be coming back to this image uh, later on in the presentation. So just to give a brief overview of what I'm going to go through, I've created a bit of an animation. So we're going to be talking about project providers. So how we can add these drop down menus to your uh, LabVIEW Project Explorer. We'll be talking about scripting. So here I'm going to use scripting to create something like 250, 260 VIs. Each of those VIs I'm scripting to change the icon I can then place those down on a calling VI like this and create a beautiful picture of Jörg. And just to prove they're all individual VIs, I can select them, I can right click using a custom right click menu option, bring up the icon editor. You can see Jörg needs to go to the dentist, there's a bit of pack build up there, but we can color in and change that icon. And so we're left with this beautiful picture. In my lab environment, I've made quick drop shortcuts so I can quickly get to my GitHub page. So if I go control space, control G, I get to GitHub. And this is where you can download all of the demonstrations I show in today's presentation. There's also custom IDE menu options. So now I can return to the presentation uh, from LabVIEW. It will open up PowerPoint and start the presentation again. Although a few minor edits. Uh, to try and edit out GDevCon. OK, so that's what we're going to go through. And it's just in order of appearance, we saw project providers, right click menus, a uh, quick drop shortcuts and how we could actually edit the LabVIEW IDE uh, menu options. And we're going to 
And throughout all of that, we looked at VI scripting. And VI scripting was the way that we could create this image of Jörg. And also, if you haven't heard of VI scripting before, it's just an extension of VI server. The first thing we're going to look at are the LabVIEW menus, possibly the easiest thing to implement in this presentation, just adding items to those LabVIEW menus. So in the demonstration before, I showed you how we could go from file and then return to presentation. The item of return to presentation directly corresponds to a VI I have on disk. So I have a VI on disk called return to presentation. And the reason why it appears in that menu option is simply because it's in the LabVIEW wizard directory. So if you want to add things to uh, the file menu, simply go to your LabVIEW directory. You can create a, a folder called wizard and place your VIs in there. You can do the same for tools, just create a project directory or help create a help directory. And there's nothing particularly special about the VIs I've put in here. The code running behind the scenes is very straightforward. I'm simply doing a, um, a system exec call to PowerPoint. And I open up that PowerPoint presentation. One of the little gotchas though, uh, by default, if you go to file and then return to presentation, that's just going to open up that VI. In order to have that VI execute when open, you need to do Control I, if then add to the LabVIEW menus. It's sorry, Control I, open up VI properties, go to execution, then select Run when opened. And by clicking and by selecting Run when opened, that gives the impression of an executable in the sense of you can open that VI and it executes um, straight away. There are a couple of really neat features though. So when we're adding to the LabVIEW menus, if you're adding multiple items, let's say, um, let's say you're at your company, you add, want to add multiple tools to your file menu or to your tools menu, you can create a text file called uh, submenu.txt text file, and you can order your items. And then you can easily do a space between each of those items. So here I have VIs one to four, but in this text file, I've reordered those items to be item four, two, separator, one, separator, three. And that's how it's going to appear in my file menu. So if you have a custom tool that you use at work, you can really easily add it to your LabVIEW IDE. Okay, so that's everything I have for LabVIEW menus. The next thing I want to talk about are the right-click menus. So when you're developing, when you're developing code, to find anything in LabVIEW, it's always a right-click. So there's so you can create your own custom right-click menus. So here are two custom right-click menus which I use all the time for when I'm developing using Actor Framework. So uh, the one on the left here, that's created uh, by one of my mates, uh, Chris. And what that allows you to do is right-click any send message in Actor Framework and it'll open up the method itself. So if you try to open up that VI, all you would see is a couple of NQ functions. But instead, by right-clicking and opening up the method, it actually shows you what's going to execute when that method is received. And I really love that feature. I use it all day, every day. Um, the second feature that I've created is an add reference to class data. So with that right-click menu, I can right-click any control or indicator um, on my front panel and add reference to class data. And by doing that, I can then uh, programmatically access all of the properties of uh, control of object from any of my uh, method VIs using Active Framework. You don't need to be using Active Framework. If you realize that your VI is part, if it realizes your 
uh, VI is part of a library, uh, you'll see this right click menu and it will just add your control reference to the class data. Something else that I use all the time and something I really wish LabVIEW had, I'm not sure why LabVIEW doesn't have this, um, is the ability to convert in between property node and invoke node. Because if you put down a for loop in LabVIEW and you right click, it asks, oh, do you want to replace that with a while loop? And if you put a while loop down, you can easily convert that to a for loop. I really wish this option was natively available. We can convert from invoke to property node, then from property back to invoke node. And I'm going to show you now how I created these right click menus, uh, focusing on the convert from invoke to properties. So I did some digging around the, uh, the LabVIEW directory, and I came across uh, resources, plugins, pop-up menus. And in the pop-up menus, uh, directory, you'll see all of your custom right-click menu items. You'll also see a create shortcut menu plugin from template VI. So if you open up that VI, you can specify a name for your plugin. So my name was convert node. I could say whether it was an edit or runtime. So because I use this all the time when creating code, it's there available in edit time. You can then run this VI. And by running this VI, you're going to be greeted with a LabVIEW library, an LLB. And this LabVIEW library has just three items. And these three items allow you to specify what this right-click menu will be used for. It will specify what happens when you actually right-click on one of those eligible items. It, and the last one allows you to specify what happens when you click or what happens when you select that custom item. So the first one here, we are asking the question, what will the right click menu support? So in here, I've put in an array of uh, nodes or the node references. However, it's not enough in VI server just to call it a simple node. In fact, the most difficult part of all of this is finding that reference. So it's not just an invoke node, it's an object function, growable function, node, G object, generic, et cetera. And navigating all of those right-click menus, um, all of those nested right-click menus can be quite challenging. But anyway, I've put the support as an object function and object functions are like constructor nodes, invoke nodes, property nodes. So now we know what the RCM will support. We're going to now select how will the right click menu appear. So in this section of code, the main thing I'm doing here is saying, OK, what's the class name of the thing I selected? If I selected property, then I'm going to display the text convert to invoke node. If I right clicked invoke, then I'm just going to pass through the text convert to property node. It's really very uh, straightforward. And then this bottom item, all that's doing is, uh, is saying what VI should actually execute when you select convert to invoke node or property node. And on the screen here, you see some really straightforward scripting. We, we get an array here of all of the uh, invoke nodes or property nodes that were selected. And from those references, you can find out, OK, was it an invoke node? Was it a property node? If it was, an, if it was a property node, we get this class ID out. But you can also use the class name that would have made for a bit better code. So if you get a property node here, you can replace the style with an invoke node and vice versa for uh, properties. So again, so really straightforward. All of this code took all of what, 10 minutes uh, to create. 
And because I spent 10 minutes creating this plugin, I now save, um, I've probably saved a few hours um, if you total up all of the 30 seconds that I've saved. It's, yeah, I'm not sure why this isn't included in NavView, but it's available on my GitHub page if you want to download it and use it. And I'll put links to my GitHub page at the end. And if you're, if you're interested in all of these right-click plugins, um, just go on to ni.com forward slash LV menus. And that's the vanity link for the LAVI shortcut menu plugins. And you'll see there are loads of different plugins available. Um, here's one of my favorites, where you can right-click and insert bundle by name. And you can use a nested menu to find the exact item that you want to bundle or unbundle. Well, of course, you could use quick drop plugin, a quick drop shortcut, which we'll come on to later. Now, the first time I did this presentation was at GDevCon. And at GDevCon, it was just after LAVI 2019 uh, was released. And I must admit, I had a bit of a bitter taste, a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth when LAVI 2019 was released, because we went from having these right-click menus where you could select a wire, the first option was clean up wire. We could select a tunnel and the first option was use default if unwired. Or we could uh, right click a tunnel on a case structure and it will say replace with case selector. If then suddenly in 2019, all of those got replaced with create constant, create constant, create constant. And I created so many constants <laughs> across my block diagram and I absolutely hated it. Um, but after a bit of um, advice from guys from, from NI, I grew to, to live with it. And that being said, if you want to revert that change, you can do with uh, the items on the screen. So pop up menu start elevate creation equals false, add that to your LabVIEW INI file, and you can suppress uh, that change. However, as I said, I had a bit of a change of heart. I actually really like this feature now. So well done, NI, uh, for, for implementing that. OK, but so, so far we've talked about um, IDE. Yeah, Eric says, you're welcome. Um, so, so far we've spoken about adding drop down menus to the IDE. So file tools and help. We've spoken about custom right click menus. Um, so we can, if you right click a invoke node, you can convert it to a property node, vice versa. Um, we're now going to talk about quick drop shortcuts. Um, so just in the uh, chat window, let me know if you use quick drop shortcuts. Just start spamming the chat window with your favorite ones, let me know how many quick drop shortcuts uh, you know. Um, so yeah, quick drop shortcuts are amazing. They speak, they've sped up my programming no end. Um, I've put on the screen here like a bit of a, a demonstration of like the mainstream uh, quick drop shortcuts. You can see I'm adding a trigger here and then I'll create some, con some controls. I'm now going to move the labels of those controls. Can auto wire them, create controls, indicators, etc. Yep, Baz's favorite quick drop shortcut is Control Shift I. Um, now, if you've watched this presentation before, you know what's happening next because it's time for some audience participation and it is quiz time. So, what I want everyone to do is get out your mobile phones. So from your mobile phone, go to kahoot.it. So K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T and enter the code 9067665. Okay, and it does work best if you use your uh, mobile phone. You can do it on desktop if you have multiple uh, screens connected. Um, but yeah, if you have a phone, Go to kahoot.it and enter the code uh, 906 
five. OK, I'll do. Um, you're saying anyone who was at GDEVCON should refrain from playing. I disagree. If you were at GDEVCON, um, well, you deserve a bit of a head start. Um, all the best people were there, I'm sure. OK, um, I'll keep the code up on screen. You should be able to see uh, the code up here. So if you're still uh, connecting to Kahoot, again, go to kahoot.it, enter the code 9067665. If you're struggling to think of a nickname, choose your favourite colour, choose your favourite LabVIEW uh, function. OK, I mean, we have, what, 35, OK, 40 people joining on Kahoot. I can see well over 75 people on this chat window. So keep on coming. Uh, Simon, I'm sure you'll remember more than you think. OK, I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll get started with this quiz. We're only at 43 and there are 70, what, 80 of you on the chat window. OK, let's get started. So the way that this is going to work is there's going to be a question on screen or a statement, and that statement is going to describe the quick drop shortcut. Your job here is going to be to um, is going to be to select the letter from your phone. So hopefully you'll get the idea from our first go. So I'm going to start this now. So let's have a look at these quick drop shortcuts starting in three, two, one. And your first question is going to be about wiring multiple objects together. So you have a load of loose items and you want to wire those together. And then if you do control shift, and then this letter, something else, something special is going to happen. So you have five seconds left, four, three, two, one. Let's see how many of you got this correct. There are 40 answers. Hey, control space, control W for wiring all of these objects together. Well done, 40 of you. I feel sorry for the one person who picked O. And it's another quick drop shortcut. So maybe you got uh, confused. OK, so. Congratulations to Marty 8, who was the quickest. Right, let's have a look at the next question. There are 10 of these. So um, arrange VI window. So we've got a bit of a, an unsized or unattractive VI window here, and we want to rearrange that. Uh, so it's been resized and quite nice. So about five seconds left. Or three, two, one. 40 answers, 41 answers. The correct answer was o, uh, F, actually. Um, so yeah, a bit of a, a more level playing field here. Well done to 20 of you. Nice. It looks like there's a couple of us who are creeping up the leaderboard. OK, so the next one is VI server rename. Oh, this is a, a quick drop shortcut, which I think is overlooked all the time. Um, yeah, there's a note here about 2020, you can use uh, Control U. That's, I think Control U does like something slightly different. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, it was very close with this one. So 13 of you said B. So just to uh, reiterate, this quick drop shortcut. If you select an invoke node or a property node and you want to quickly go between the application class and your VI class or any other class, you can just do control space, type in VI, and then control B. If you want to change the method, so here we go from property to panel of a property here, do control shift B. Um, I use this all the time to do things like um, front panel open, where you do fp.open or fp.close. Is Marty still in head? Oh no, Marty's gone uh, down a couple.
Okay, so next quick drop shortcut. Um, if you want to standardize all of your label labeling positions, which quick drop shortcut should you use? L, T, B, or M? It's got about five seconds remaining, just over. And if you do control shift, then this one, it will also work in nested structures. Still, most people got this one right. It is T, um, not the more obvious L. OK, we still have a new winner who's pulling ahead by about 200 points. And the quicker you place your answer, the quicker um, the, the more points you get. So if you want to replace a function like uh, read text file to write text file, is it Q, R, P or Z? Not Z. So Q, P, R or Z. Got 40 answers. Yeah, so this is the one which I thought would catch most people out um, because to replace it is P. Uh, there's a comment here saying it should be R. Well, R is used for something else. And when that something else comes up, perhaps you'll um, recognize it. OK, let's do our Tim Robinson's giving the game away. OK, so. A scoreboard is changing up slightly. We've got Stefan and Enrique climbing up the leaderboard. OK, number six, to remove and rewire something. So if we want to get rid of this write to file function, is it I, P, A or R? OK, we've got 36, almost 40 answers with five seconds remaining. Yeah, and pretty much everyone got this one correct. It is R for remove. And to, I, I think it's unfair to laugh at whoever missed this. Um, OK. Seven of ten. OK, so now we want to insert something. So let's say we want to in, um, insert a load of uh, store data flows or if we do control shift and this item we can insert onto multiple wires like reference wire and an error wire. So P, I, M or N. Perfect and 35 of us got this correct. It is I. Okay. Oh, this is a new one for uh, LabVIEW 2020. So update the icon with the VI name. So here we've got a blank VI icon. I did control space, then control, then a letter of my VI icon updated. Is it K, U, N, or V? Four seconds left. And one. Perfect, 18 of us uh, knew this one. So I think I'm right in saying, this is brand new in LabVIEW 2020. And again, it's a quick drop shortcut I use all the time. Basically, every VI that I create, I just do a quick Control S to save and Control Space, Control K to update the icon. OK, so two more. Uh, reset to origin. This was introduced in 2019, so last year. If we do control space control something, we shift that VI up into the left hand corner. Um, again, this is something I use quite a bit. I have, um, I don't really have a grid. I use the block diagram dots and the front panel dots. Um, but yeah, it is O. And well done, 32 of you. But I think this is the final question. So if you're in second, third or fourth place, be super quick with this next question. And if we want to wire all terminals, so if we want to create all of the controls and indicators, or if we just want to create constants, so we do control space, control T, A, D or W. 
So T, A, D or W, we've got 38 answers with three seconds left. Nice, and the answer is D. And um, so there was a comment here, uh, you should replace D and call D delete. Well, D is currently used for while all terminals, despite the fact there's not a D anywhere in the term while all terminals. Uh, but I'm sure there was reason, a reason behind the design. OK, so drum roll, please, everyone. So in third place was Stefan. Well done. Get a little bouncy name there. In second place was Ayanda. And then first, Eisenweir. So well done, everyone. I hope you enjoy the little dancing people. And also, everyone here got a 10 out of 10. And so well done. Well done, them. So round of applause for everyone. OK, I see that um, someone just put up their hand. Um, if you want to unmute your microphone, you feel free to ask a question. OK, well done, everyone. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, prizes. Um, well, actually, no, that's a lie. I actually have quite a lot of um, NI, NI swag um, left over from the GLA summit. Um, so if I happen to run into you over the next year or two when we're allowed out, I, I think I have an NI water bottle I could give you, if you remind me, that is. OK. Um, put your, your hand up or just start spamming the chat window if you're aware of who Fabiola Della Cueva is. So if you know Fabiola, just start spamming the chat window. Because, or if you've been to one of her presentations. Yeah, so lots of love for uh, Fab here. However, there's one particular aspect about Fabiola, which, um, which can be slightly annoying. Because she'll, she'll be doing a presentation and then she'll mention something offhand. And like an earworm, it just sticks in my head. And I just can't can't shake it. One of the things that Fabiola just said offhand uh, at a presentation was about how all error wires on your block diagram should be pushed to the back um, of your uh, block diagram. Um, and so here we have some examples. We have we're just adding a function, and the wires are overlapping an error cluster, and the wires are going behind the error cluster. Well, ever since Fabiola said this to me, what, five years ago, maybe? Now, I absolutely hate it when there's an error wire going on top of functional code. Anyway, if you're not, if you're not sure who Fabiola is, um, I realized her here. So you can see that I scripted her face using uh, VI scripting and VIs. Um, so I've made so I made a quick drop shortcut that would push all otherwise to the back of your block diagram. And again, the way that I did that was rummaging it around your LabVIEW directory until I found uh, your LabVIEW directory resources dialog and then quick drop. In then I was really pleased to find there was a quick drop plugin template dot uh, vit. So if you create a new VI from that VI template, you'll be greeted with this code. And I know what you're thinking. But your first thoughts are probably, oh my, that's a lot of documentation. But if you filter through all of that documentation, you get to some quite interesting things. You have your um, undo uh, transition start and end statements at either side of this block diagram. You have um, references to everything that was selected on your block diagram or on your front panel. And then in a for loop, that for loop is where you're going to be doing all of your programmatic scripting. Okay, so I 
I used SVI templates and then I created a piece of code that would push all error wires to the back of your to the back of the block diagram. And this is the code I created. Perhaps I should have added a few more comments. But well, we live and we learn. OK, so there's, this is quite a wide piece of code, so I'll just zoom in on the piece of code that we're interested in. On the very left hand side, left hand corner, we have this array of the selection list. And the se selection list uh, scripting uh, property node, uh, that's placed down for you as part of the template. I'm then saying, OK, is there anything in this selection list? Using just the array empty uh, function. If there are things in this selection, if there if there's not anything in this selection list, I actually just scan my entire block diagram and I return a reference to every single wire. And perhaps in the comments, you can let me know if there's a more efficient way um, of doing this. But I'm essentially selecting, I'm getting a reference to every single wire on that block diagram. I'm then looking at the terminals of all of those wires and I'm saying, okay, is the source of that wire an error. So is the source of the data type an error code or a, an error cluster? If it is, then I'm going to select it. If it isn't, then I don't. If then right at the end of my code, I can move selection to back. So right at the end of the code, I move everything that's selected to the back. Or if I was holding down shift, I move everything that was selected um, to the front. Now, the reason why I added the shift to bring everything to the front is within my error handling code, the error wires are the important things that I want to uh, be using. So it's not fair to say that error wires should always be at the back. Um, I also made this VI so if you have selected things on your block diagram, you can move just the selected wires to the front or back. Um, there's a question here is, is there a need to continue looping on the outer loop if there is an error since it is in shift register or shouldn't there be a shift register? Um, are you talking about the shift registers, the error wire shift registers? If so, um, yeah, I shouldn't have used shift registers, but I should have just built an array of errors and then merged those errors to the front. Um, but I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm going to ever go back and refactor this code. However, this code is available on my GitHub page. So if you want to refactor it, uh, feel free to fork and merge. OK. Um, and the last thing to mention about this quick drop shortcut is if you do control I to go to the documentation page or VI properties, then select documentation. The way that you can select what the default letter is. So if you do control space, then control E in this case for error. Um, that will activate this quick drop shortcut. OK. Um, if anyone does have any questions, comments or thoughts, uh, please let me know um, in the chat window. Okay. But the final topic I'm going to talk about is the project provider framework. And so if you're looking for a surefire way to constantly crash your uh, LabVIEW environment, the LabVIEW project, the project provider framework is the solution. So with the project provider framework, as well as constantly crashing in LabVIEW, can also use it to extend your, well, your project provider or your project explorer. So on the background of this screen, I've put in two PPFs that I've created. The first is the ability to enable debugging or disable debugging. And I've made it so you can right click an individual uh, VI virtual folder or to populating folder class or library, right click, go to debugging, and then you can select enable all, disable all, or the individual VIs that you want to enable, disable debugging for. 
The next project provider I've created is a documentation tool. Um, and this documentation tool just speeds up the process of adding VI descriptions, changing your VI icon. Um, it doesn't particularly do anything that exciting, but it does speed up the process of doing your VI documentation. And again, you can access that tool by, um, by clicking the icon on your project toolbar or by clicking individual items. Again, I've made it compatible with classes, libraries, folders, and individual VIs. And let's talk about this documentation tool first, because I created this documentation tool before I knew about the project provider framework. But what this documentation tool allows you to do is, well, firstly, you can see all of the VIs in a list. And if you double click the icon of one of these VIs, it will just open up the icon editor. And then once you're in the icon editor, you can very quickly change something. So I've had a situation before where I've distributed a package, maybe as a PPL or just a, a JKI uh, package. Then I've realized that just one of my VIs doesn't have an appropriate icon. Whereas with this documentation tool, I can just load that entire package into this tool, scroll down and quickly make sure everything has an icon and that everything has a description. So if there's a missing description, I can just quickly type out a description or I can just copy and paste existing uh, descriptions and edit them. And this tool will just constantly save um, in the background. I then decided to add some plugins to this tool. So if you right click any of these, you can uh, like remove the VI, open the VI, edit icon, even run VI analyzer. And you can select to analyze a particular VI or control shift A to analyze um, every VI. And that will just launch um, VI analyzer uh, programmatically and you get the results like you're used to. There's not really too much more to say about the documentation tool. Um, it is available on my GitHub page if you want to download it. Uh, there'll be links uh, later on. The next project provider um, I created was the toggle debugging uh, tool. So with this tool, as I said earlier, you can right click libraries or uh, classes or VIs, go to debugging, even select uh, disable all or individual items. Um, so question here, sorry, I missed it, but where can I find the tool? Um, I'll leave a link at the end. It, it'll be on GitHub, Tom Slavio extensions. I'll put that on the screen later. Tom, two minutes. Yeah, all right. Um, you can also do it so you can right click individual VIs and enable disable debugging. In order to implement this, we have some methods like we did with the right click menu. So if the user right clicks an item, this VI is going to execute. And I can say that the menu name is Tom's Tools Documentation Tool. And we have a tag. When that tag is um, executed, all it's going to do is launch an actor in the background and do a load of bits. Um, if you're interested in this surefire way of crashing your LabVIEW project, feel free to go to LabVIEW project providers on your on the NI forums. There's loads of there and loads of details on how to get started, such as developer guides, the API, um, and some example projects. However, I can't mention the project provider framework without this warning, saying it's risky, unstable, unsupported, and really a bad idea to use in general. That being said, however, the project providers are really powerful and in, can increase productivity. So feel free, give them a go, but please make sure you do it on someone else's PC. OK, I think I'm out of time there. So uh, thank you very much. Um, I've got some links up in the screen here. So love you shortcut menus, ni.com forward slash LV menus. 
MI Community for Quick Drop Enthusiasts and Project Provider Framework or PPF. Um, there's a question here. Do you have any tips to manage all of these various LV implementation tools a single PC? Um, so yes, if you go to your documents folder, uh, you, there's normally a, uh, an item called uh, LabVIEW data. And inside LabVIEW data, if you put your extensions inside that folder, they'll be available for um, all of the versions of LabVIEW on your PC. Yeah, if there are any questions, comments or thoughts, I'm out of time now, but please feel free to reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn. That's just Thomas McQuillan. Um, I've noticed my YouTube channel isn't being mentioned there. My YouTube channel is, is Tom's LabVIEW Adventure. Um, like, comment and subscribe. All right, thank you everyone. And I'll let uh, Sri take take over. Thanks very much, Tom. I mean, that was really, really interesting and useful. Um, yeah, um, and uh, I can't recommend the uh, YouTube channel enough. I mean, so uh, um, they, he has a lot of uh, tutorials on DQMH and um, Active Framework and object-oriented programming. If you've not checked it out, it's a really, really good uh, resource and um, yeah, Tom has been a revelation in the uh, in the LabVIEW community over the last five or six years, I would say. I mean, and uh, I'm glad people like Tom exist because I, I, I could learn quite a lot as well. Thank you so much.